A la patada, patana. Come see me live. I will be in Schaumburg, Illinois, February 13th to the 16th at the Chicago Improv. <laughs> San Jose, in California, February 28th, March 1st at the San Jose Improv. Denver Co. 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 Colorado, March 12th to the 14th at the Comedy Works. Houston, Texas, March 27th, 29th, Houston Improv. Come to the Bobby Lee.com. BobbyLeeLive.com and grab them before they're gone. Enjoy the show. Is that be- let's well, let's let's I want to get into that later. All right. Hold on. Ready? And do the countdown. Five, four, three, two. Idiot mean dun 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 dun. Do you know what I mean? Dun 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 dun. Welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly TV. Um, this is where you learn all your news information, health advice, and spiritual. Um, council. Um, I'm your captain, your spiritual leader, your guru, your um, messiah, Bobby Lee. Good evening or afternoon, whenever you're listening. Uh, we have Kalila mm-hmm. Kuhn, my, my girlfriend. We got um, beautiful, handsome, two dimensional. You almost said flat first. Flat what? Flat face. You didn't say that. Okay. Was I thinking it? 100%. Yes. Yeah. 100%. We got this fucking guy. He he comes to my club in Irvine, <laughs> right? And you know what I found out? He hung around, you know, in front of the audience so that he could take photos and people can like recognize oh him from the podcast. Ew, George, it's you so did that? fucking gross. Yeah, he was. Wait, you he, did a lap? He did a lap fishing because he was with his girlfriend, and he was fishing. That's why. He, he, why would he come to my show with? For he goes there for that. <laughs> Okay, but did <laughs> how many photos did you take? Two. No, I'll be honest. Two. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's well, sad. That's actually sad. Oh and man, sad. Take, hey, take a lap yeah. next we got, time. We got Chong, <laughs> we got Chong Chongo. Chong Chongo. Chong Chongo. Our guest today um, is somebody that honestly I just I don't have anything bad to say about him. <laughs> You know, usually I have people that I talk shit true. behind their back when they come here. Yeah, true. This piece of shit, if they say this, I'm going to go crazy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Whatever. But just thinking about what this guy, I just, not a single even negative thing. I I remember when I met him. I can't tell you how I met him, but I remember me- when I met him. I've always liked him. Um, he is so fucking funny as a stand-up. So smart. So funny. Um, he's married to, you know, a comic who we've had on. Natasha Lagaro, and um, she's great. She's a dwarf, but um, we love dwarf comics. <laughs> Don't we? We love Brad Williams. We've never had. We're gonna get Brad on. Yeah. yeah. But that was the first dwarf we had, and she's great. She was in. Uh, <laughs> she was Tinkerbell. Oh, in Disney. Yeah. Yeah, the Disney. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had to add the wings. CGI yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we have a guy who he has. He has a comedy album coming out. He's a writer. Um, very funny stand up producer um but he's he's good to my brother steve and that's the, really the measure of how i measure people is if i always ask my brother um do you like uh Mo- Moshe? and he goes oh he'll go on a 10 minute thing nicest guy you know my brother right <laughs> no who's your brother no. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby so told me not to talk yeah, yeah, don't, say the intro. don't say anything so, um, He's like I'm going to insult your wife for a little bit Just don't say anything Don't say a yeah, word yeah. <laughs> yeah so he's married to a pygmy Right A mythical creature And um, and I love him so much Moshe Kasher everybody Clap your applause. And dude thank you for being here man Oh thank you for having me I'm thrilled I'm thrilled Do you I was what Do you Was that Improv, the Idi Amin song, or do you come up with a new dictator to intro every No, episode? I just came up with it just then. That'd be a fun new game for you. What? New dictator. Dictator, yeah. Mm. Pol Pot, yeah. my man. Yeah, yeah, Pol yeah. Pot, <laughs> you just got got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Something like that, yeah. yeah. I'm not a writer, but yeah. No. A very good idea. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you and I are similar in the way too is is that you and I have the same kind of coping mechanisms. Oh yeah? How how so? Well can you I fuck a dwarf too? Or <laughs> 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 no, 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 because uh, I like regular humans. <laughs> you know, she's a regular human. But um, I've always loved that about you. I've always admired that about you. Yeah. <laughs> regular human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, but yeah, you can talk about anything. What? No, but recovery. Can I talk about that? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, so you and I were are both sober. Yeah, we both um, the times that we've met and hung out with or worked together, we exchange vapes. That's right. And vape flavors. Right, right, and you the, had. Uh, to be fair to me, I had one. You had like a Mr. T necklace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look like an early candy <laughs> raver. With them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm the type of guy that needs to try it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, I mean, you had like it looked like a like a a, a bullet, a round of bullets from World War One. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. What do you want? Blueberry? Do you want blueberry mint? I got blueberry mint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I'm like that, but I am. And um, I just want to say that um, that you um. You know, in terms of comics, you know, there. Do you like all comics? <laughs> I mean, do you go to the of store? Of course or, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course not. I'm a comedian. It, right. My favorite pastime is to talk about the comics <laughs> I don't like. Right, right. And I brought a list. <laughs> <laughs> but what? I mean, I'm not going to name names, but um, but what is something that a comic will do to um irritate you? I would. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this the other day. The the uh unaware ego. Is I would say that that's number one. That's that's my number one one. It's like when you don't know. Are you saying you have that? No, I'm I'm just, oh, you agree. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I was like you're the opposite. You have unaware. You have humility that you shouldn't sh- shouldn't be having. You can, Bobby will always come off. I always say come off the stage, and I'll be like, oh my god, I have to follow that. There's like nine standing ovations, and he's like, I don't know what I'm doing in this business. I suck. So you have the opposite. <laughs> I, that's also irritating. Right. Well, what- <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a kind. It's also, I guess, a kind of ego. I guess. No, because Whitney Cummings said to me once, "If you ever say something like that again, we're done. <laughs> she's gonna break up with you." No, but she's like, "I can't, I can't anymore with you with that." You know, and it's it is a, it is a character defect. It's not, I don't think that's a good thing. What, pretending things are worse than they are. Yeah, because it, you know what? Because I live in shame, and I and because of this new sobriety that I have and this and that, I'm trying to analyze. Why I do certain things and the root cause and whatnot. Well, if we're doing an intervention on you, can I? You <laughs> yeah. got to do a comedy special, dude. Oh my! <laughs> like, what the fuck? I know. It was literally. I, I'm not even kidding. This was the subject. You weren't even involved. This was the subject of a text thread I'm on. What? <laughs> why? They're like, why hasn't what? Bobby done a special? And I was like, I know why. It was just positive. This was positive. But Moshe, but, but check this out. Okay? Is this an ongoing theme? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Not only fans, all everybody, but here I went into Netflix. A month ago to pitch something else. Yeah. And I was with Joe Coy because, you know, and they love him. Sure. And then they just said, and then I was with Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel go because he's producing it. And he goes, um, Bobby does stand up too. And they, everyone in the room were like, you do stand up? Really? Yeah. There's no awareness. That is not true. You're it, doing the thing again. No. I, I, wait, how? Wait, I think how, he's doing wait, the wait, thing. I Isn't he doing the thing? thing? Because uh, how, is, how is it that if I was doing the thing, that I witness it. Right. Okay. Fair. They right. I just that. did Burt Kreischer's show on Netflix, mm-hmm. and one of the ladies that works closely with Robbie had no really awareness that I did stand up. So it's those things that make me go, "Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it." Well, I mean, but that's the. It's not like you have to do a Netflix special. That's right. Yeah, but to me, that's where the cool kids are doing it, and you I could go- still do a CISO special. That's still a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, for some reason, I, I if I wanted, if I'm gonna do one, and, and maybe this is my own ego, but I, because I, I, you know, you and I play the A rooms, sure, with all the other ones. We know, right? You, you've seen guys that you know that maybe shouldn't have one that Should, get one, shouldn't have gotten a special, yes, oh, or, sure. or yeah, right, yeah, and they get the green light, and then like, and if they're not aware of me. Then it feeds into my insecurities, and it makes me already spin out and think they don't like me. So it's why even even try. Well, I just I mean I don't. Is this what we do on this podcast? Yeah, yeah, Bobby, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, yeah. so funny. I mean, I don't do that. Don't do no, that. Still, that's not why I said I did no, that. I didn't yeah, do that yeah, for that. that. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what we do. No, but I mean you're like such a killer. It's like I, every time I watch you, I'm like, what this? What I mean? But to be fair, you're you're, you're a big stand-up comedian. It's not like people don't know. Yeah. This is insane. But for me, no, but right now. You, we have gatekeepers. You know that. Sure, that's true. It's you know we. 
you know, when I you know, I just did the Irvine Improv, I sold out every show. Yeah. And that's a huge club. Yeah. And no comms. I, I sell hard tickets. And so I'm aware of those things. So on street level, street credibility wise, yeah, I'm a stand up. But, you know, when it comes to, like, I could do a special on YouTube for free. No, if I no, wanna no. Do, you know what I mean? So why would I want to do that? No, I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Yep. You could, but, there's so many people you could walk into tomorrow. Just because one, look, listen, all you have to do is have the right Jew on your podcast. And guess what, baby? You got it. <laughs> I control the gate. I'm the keeper of the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm the guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm responsible for every Netflix special. Wow. Every one. All the ones you didn't like. like all the Morpheus ones you like. Of, <laughs> That's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have the gate key. So, um... But you know what? I this year I am gonna do one. Hell yeah! Okay. Yeah. I am gonna do one. Yeah. You have a comedy album. I do have a comedy album yeah. coming out. Actually, on oh I don't know when this comes out, but it's coming out on January twenty fourth. I know that. So, so by the time this comes out, it, it'll be coming out or it's out. Yeah. And <laughs> one of those. One of those. Wait, what? is there another option? By the time this comes out, it will be coming out or it's out, it's out. or I will have not recorded it yet. <laughs> Things get weird enough. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't exist, no. but it will. But I, I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing stand up. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. make it through the right, ring. Right. Open mic it up. I'm gonna finally get. I'm gonna get past at the store. Right. In I'm gonna, 15 years old. I'm gonna run my hour at the store. Right, you know, right. We always laugh at that. That's the thing that annoys me. Okay. Now I'm gonna piss a lot of people off. Okay. I always. I always. Okay. I, I have a couple comedian friends. We always text each other when people tweet running my new hour. And the ultimate running my new hour is running my new hour at the store. Because yeah. it always implies I have another hour. I have an old, just so you know, I do have an old hour. There's another hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be running the new one. Just yeah. so you know, my new hour, it's coming and I'm running it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but this is not my new hour or my old hour. This is uh, my album coming out on, on the 24th is an entirely uh, crowd work album. And uh, it's, wow. it's sort of what I do best. It's like kind of my, I mean, I, I like writing jokes too, but 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 it's, crowd work is kind of my, that's my sweet You're spot. very good at it. Thank you. And so I was like. you. I think you're the best. Ian Bagg's pretty Ian's good so, at so right, good. but you guys are Todd the top at that. Todd Barry. Todd Barry's great Paula at Paula Poundstone. I always have to I shout out her. Paula Poundstone. She, I love her so. She's wait, so wait. good. She's really, really, really good at crowd work. I swear. You swear to no I? I, I can't believe that. No cap, as the kids say. It's they, like it's like always... saying Kathy Bates is the fastest swimmer. <laughs> no, why? She might be. You don't know that. Yeah, I go, well, Michael Phelps? No, Kathy like Bates. And it's, yeah. Why is it like that? Because <laughs> I've seen Paula Poundstone on her specials growing up. Yeah. And I, I used to use them to fall asleep. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. God. You were so terrible. You're like, I don't want to name I names, but no, Paula Poundstone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she, I'm sure she's a great lady. <laughs> oh, my God. But like. Oh, anyway. Patrice. <laughs> Pat Did you like Patrice O'Neal? There's a killer there. I would say that guy is probably, my, I would say, the best crowd work practitioner of all time. Big J, Big J Okerson's really Very good. Very good at it, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, I was trying to do, I wanted to do an album where it was all crowd work, and I was trying to solve what I think of as the inherent problem in an album or a special of crowd work, which is that it always feels like temporary, right? Like, a special's better because you can turn the camera to the person and be like, oh, he, he is a goofy-looking motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> he does look like a Christmas pimp or whatever yeah. they're riffing on. But so I was trying to solve that problem with an audio album, and I, so this is kind of a concept album. Instead of, like, t talking to people about who they are, what they do, I asked the ad audience five questions specific questions like uh, have you ever what's the craziest uh, interaction with the police you've ever had what's your wildest night on drugs what's your craziest sexual experience and then people would raise their hands and my the, the open my Andrew Andrew Michon my opener would run over give them a mic and uh, they they would tell the story and I would riff on it so it's wow like, it's a cool kind of semi-concept album because that, before if you did it on a special they wouldn't be mic necessarily exactly so you'd right. have to almost repeat what they're saying you have to repeat what they're saying and it could only be kind of t t like short it could it, you know like like I always felt like an elephant in the room almost um, almost I think solved this but I always thought like watching Patrice's specials he was so funny but there was nothing ever like the experience of seeing him live right. and then Elf in the Room he kind of did a thing but still it was mostly material but what he, who he was as a performer and what I'm starting to try to accept about myself as a performer for, uh -oh. getting, for getting real is that a set from me if I'm just doing material it's just not who I am that's not me I'm that's not what it's like to watch me as a performer what what that, I that's a, that's why I wouldn't do an album because I'm physical right it right. would it would disservice me right right and the reason you wouldn't do a special is because you're unknown in the entertainment industry <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Oh. Feed into it. Feed into it. Feed into it. Feed the fucking shame. I love it. So it's called crowd surfing, and I'm really proud of it. I think it came out really well. Oh, I, I can't wait. I, yeah. I love the concept and, and stuff. I right. think it'll, I hope it'll work. And then the, it was the kind of experience you have doing comedy where you're like, you're like kicking yourself after you do it. Cause you're like, why haven't I been doing this for 10 fucking years? Yeah. Like it required nothing. You know, it, all I had to do was show up. I didn't have to like write my new hour. All I had to do was like be me, show up, and record these shows. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, how so, many shows did you do to record it? All? It was a. It was one half hour show. No, it was a four a four <laughs> nights. <laughs> oh, four nights. No, I'm sorry, four shows. It was a. It was a weekend at the DC Improv, and we sort of stitched together the greatest stories. But what's what I do? How great is that club, by the way? It's the best. Yeah. It's uh, so yeah, awesome. They won't have me back, but it's the why? One. Why? What happened? Because they they found out that an imposter was on. <laughs> Guy doesn't do stand up comedy. Do oh, it was a money thing. I know now. It was a money thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, you really? No, they because they go, they, they'll only pay so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. And then you, if you ask a little bit more, they go, no, they're coming for the club, not you. Right, right, right. Because the club is so historical, which I get, I guess. Did you freak out or something? No, I just said, I'll just play Arlington and they'll pay me whatever they pay me. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, totally. What I feel like I deserve. That is a, um, a dilemma of the comedian, isn't it? It's like there are certain cities in this country where there's a great room and then there's a bad room and the bad room <clears throat> not that the draft house is bad i actually really like that place yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but that there's a, a a worse room and you're like what's more important to me having a wonderful weekend where i feel like the king of comedy or making a few thousand more dollars it's, it's for a, me it's more of a principle thing though that makes that makes total right sense. because it's yeah. like you know I, what your worth is yeah and I, and i want to get paid what i'm worth Right. That's all. I'll never forget. I don't know if I've told the story before with you, but uh, we were out to eat. And this was like maybe 10 years ago. When was I, I first... involved in the story? Oh, you're there. Oh, okay. So this like when, I, <laughs> when I first moved to LA, we were all out eating at the the deli next to the Laugh Factory. Yep. Uh, Greenblatt's. Green yeah, Greenblatt's. And there was a bunch of comedians. And uh, Bobby was like, uh, going, took out his wallet and he was kind of thumbing through stuff. And then he like put a bunch of stuff down on the table and then just kind of like dropped his paycheck from the improv from the oh. <laughs> but in a way that was like very clear where the money yeah. amount was and I, all the comedians like all these young comedians are looking over <laughs> at this number and we're like <laughs> <laughs> I love it well it's like when Dalia texts me photos of like his dogs uh -huh. but they're walking on a pile of $100 bills <laughs> it's the same kind of thing or a couple of times when he was on Undateable he would take a photo of him depositing his check Oh right, and it was just an enormous amount of money. Sure, right, right, and to him just you know what I mean. It's it, it's just we're just fucking, you know, kidding. No, no, it was it, yeah, it's, but it was funny because there it was not um, a game of equals that evening. It was, yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> Like a bunch of feature acts, and then Bobby like, yeah. Pla boom! <laughs> That's what the future's got in store for you, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Greenblatt's. Welcome to Greenblatt's. <laughs> okay, that is something that I would do. So I believe it. I don't remember it, but it is something that I Another would do. Another thing he does is when we first met, it used to give me so much anxiety. He wouldn't never cash his checks. Oh, and he'd I forget that. about them. That's me. So when I would find like a check for. Ten thousand dollars. That's <laughs> two years old, and it would. I would have. I went through this whole process of having them reissued. So I sent his accountant just a pile of checks that I'd found in the last two years. Yeah. And it. I could not believe that this guy had just been stashing random. That is really funny for someone I, who goes to Arlington Improv to make a couple more thousand. Right, 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 he's right. not even <laughs> cashing the checks. It's the principle. <laughs> it's the principle. <laughs> principle of it. But the actual, the literal principle on the money you. Could could have deposited, yeah. you missed out on all that. That's an accounting joke <laughs> brought to you by Greenblatt's Jews. Crowd surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the you can expect more of that. <laughs> let me defend myself, okay? Let me defend myself. I do that too, by the way. Natasha's always complaining. She finds like fucking wads of cash, oh, kilos wow. of coke. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But she, she does. You know what the ultimate gangster move at the comedy store is? Uh, never pick up your, never pick oh. up your. Oh. Because I'll do that. I'll be like going through my checks, and and I don't do it very often. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, I am a Jew. Uh, and <laughs> no matter how successful I've become, and I'll be thumbing through it, and then you'll get to like one guy, and it's just like, oh fuck you. <laughs> Through like a hundred oh. checks, like yeah. you just don't need this. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm under L's, right? So I would go to that. So at the at the office of the comedy store uh -huh. is a is a like a, a what do you call it a a box or yeah filing a filing file. box, yeah. right? And it's you know alphabetized and um, under L. But I'd have to dig through all of Martin Lawrence's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it's like. 
three thousand Martin Lawrence right. checks because he doesn't fucking give a fuck. Yeah, I pick it up. Why? I'll tell you why I pick it up. I pick it up because because I have had financial problems in the last ten years with mm-hmm. IRS and stuff. So I want everyone to know that I don't behave like that anymore. Okay. Are you looking at the camera? Yeah. Okay. I, I, care, <laughs> I care about, you know what I mean? And there were times where I haven't made any money. I didn't know there was a I, camera at first. I thought maybe you were disassociated. <laughs> <laughs> Which he does too Which I do on occasion. Too. Right, right. So I'm letting everyone know that I'm not like that anymore. And also I it, I call it shadow money. It's like totally. I go buy shoes and stuff like that with that. Right. right. It's like it's like a selling merch on the road. Right. I always That's think like is. this isn't real money with the merch. I'll just go this this funds my trip. I right. do whatever I want. And they also the store, just to let you guys know, we get fifteen dollars right. a set. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's thousands of dollars. But after six months, you're kind of there's a, a nice fat right, kind of situation right, right. So, there. Yeah, so that's what I do. I wait mm-hmm. six months. I'll go and I'll go buy some you know made worn t shirts or something you know. But Martin Lawrence literally has three to four thousand <laughs> checks and they're probably worth by now in the tens of thousands. That's really funny. He doesn't need it. He's gonna hear this podcast though and go cash <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but we have this awesome sponsor to tell you about. Guess what? Smith is. Smith is him spelled backwards. Him spelled backwards. Guess what Smith is? Smith is. It's him spelled backwards. It's him spelled backwards. Smelled backwards. Smelled backwards. Smelled backwards. Smelled backwards. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Guys, Hymns, man, Hymns is a miracle. I'll tell you that right now, man. Hymns is better than any religion. I'll tell you that right now. Because I'm going to say this. is that If I had Hymns, the service of Hymns, back when I was a young man, my a lot of my problems would have been solved. Like I was losing hair, big chunks of hair, like Manus Malaskaka was coming out of my forehead. Oh. But him and Pauly Shore got their hairs done. By imp- but they, you don't have to do that because now you can call right and get professional. Did you just out their hair plugs? I don't care. You know what I mean? They have air plugs. Um, you can get now a real professional advice. Mm-hmm. If your dick doesn't work, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Jeff Ross's dick don't work sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? That you can have, you know what I mean, uh, professional advice. And yeah, and your fingertips affordable. Tell them about it, guys. Dive into 2020 hair first, and don't be like like all of Bobby's celebrity friends. Right now, my listeners can get started with their first month free. Go to forhams.com slash belly. That's forhams.com slash belly. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhams.com slash belly enjoy the show guess what smith is it's smith, smith is, is it's him spelled, spelled backwards. backwards enjoy the rest of the show have you ever disassociated well uh, like literally psychologically disassociated yeah. no i'm pretty i'm pretty in touch with myself no have I you i used to there's this one time at gelson's where i think i came really really close <laughs> Gelson. classic it's gelson's. so expensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was a it was a light. This is when I was like my anxiety a couple of years ago was like peaking, and I swear to you, I could not remember what I had to do, where I was, and who to call. Whoa. I like froze. Whoa. In the produce aisle. Whoa. And I remember just sweating for a couple minutes and finally coming out of it and then calling Jenna to pick me up. That sounds like a like a panic attack. It was, but it was weird because I've had multiple panic attacks before where it's like. I still, I'm pretty aware of all the frightening things around me and all the frightening people, but this wasn't it. It was almost like a, oh shit, I, I'm, my I'm soul is departing. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's really wild. How come you didn't call it? me? Yeah, that's a oh, great yeah, question. Oh yeah, you wouldn't have come fast enough. <laughs> oh, that's for the first time ever. Yeah, it's the first time ever someone said you didn't come fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> first time in your relationship. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm much more uh, cerebral, so I don't leave my brain. I like jump into it. I get into yeah. anxiety rather than like popping out. You know, I. But I, like... that's me too. Where I'm so I'm I'm too deep in it that I think what happened was I fell too deep that yeah. my soul started to kind of <laughs> mana na 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 out of my body. <laughs> Edie, I mean, Edie, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what's your thing? Um, I get panic attacks, but um. I don't. I, I don't. I don't do that. I. I more isolate. I. Um. I have a. I. Uh, speaking of coping mechanisms, I just thought you. I think you would appreciate this, both of you. Uh. When I was single, I just realized I, 
this this I mean I knew this the first part of the story, but I realized the the the, the kicker to the story is wild. When I was single, I used to go to I would I was very promiscuous when I was single, and that was like definitely where I would go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I, I just wanted you to know that I don't act that way anymore. <laughs> but I would. Um, and the comedy store, as you know, used to like, it used to kind of suck. It used to be the real, worst. A rough, rough, rough. rough. And like the kind of place where I would never bring a date, I would never bring an agent, or I would never bring anybody in the industry. I was like, "Don't come see me there. See me anywhere else." Yeah. And it's so weird because now it's like the opposite. It's yeah. the only place that's really kind of fun consistently every time in town. But I would do this thing where if I I would go on, uh, and if I bombed, which was I would say for forty per thirty forty percent of the time at that point. I mean, it was, it was a rough room. It was a rough. You room. would bomb fifty fifty. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. not not a fun room. That I would get in my car. And I would be. I live in Silver Lake, and and the comedy store is in West Hollywood, so it's about 30, 30 minutes, thirty five minutes home. As I pulled out of the parking lot, I would start texting uh, booty calls, and like immediately, like and like I would bomb, and it was like my 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 psychology was like so paper thin. It was just like must fill hole, other hole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah, hole yeah. not filled, other hole will be filled. And I would start texting booty calls, like oh, you know the, the you know when you had like multiples, you're mm-hmm. like sup 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 sup, <laughs> and and. If no one responded to me by the time I hit Western, yeah. I would pull over at the Winchell's Donuts there and get a buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> really? You got a buttermilk oh, old wow. fashion. So it's like, okay, other whole, uh, uh, whole two <laughs> unsuccessful, whole three perhaps yeah. successful. So here's the kicker to the whole thing. Um, I'm now married to a lovely dwarf and um, <laughs> and who you have to believe in in order for her powers to, this is a Tinkerbell? Okay, <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, we were, we were, uh, for years, we were trying to have a kid, and we had a we had a very difficult time having a kid. By the way, it was like really not not easy for us, and uh, we, like we did the regular way, which was fun but uh, un- uneventful at the end. And then we went through IVF, and <clears throat> that didn't work. And then you want to hear this story? This yeah, pretty, we, love yes. we love it. We love it. It's a pretty sweet story, actually. So we went through. So we we tried raw dog fucking for a while, which is yeah. the clinical term, uh, <laughs> yeah. just blasting in the sugar walls and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, that's what the doctor called it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, that didn't work. And um, <clears throat> and then we went through IVF, which is so hardcore. It's like for the woman, it's so gnarly. Like I was like fucking injecting Natasha's ass with like uh, y- syringes every oh. every night, and like yeah. uh, like her whole butt was black and blue. And, oh like, my god! And she was him- hormonal and like like crying, and it was just really hard. And it was to try to harvest these eggs. eggs yeah. It's like you're like a, 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 a or some kind of like alien organism it's like some farm or whatever it's like back to mobius yeah and then they couldn't harvest them and she had these eggs that were frozen um that she had you know natasha's set was all about like i'll never have uh i'll never be pregnant for long or having a baby is like a dui from the universe these are like yeah. a, a <laughs> yeah. theme of her yeah. of her stand-up yeah. Yeah. for some weird reason yeah. she had frozen five five eggs or eight eggs before she met me before we started dating and um <clears throat> and she so we went, we were trying to get these harvested eggs and the doctor kept saying like, don't use the frozen eggs, don't use the frozen eggs. And he would, I remember this conversation. He, I remember, by the way, he sat down, he had hair plugs and a vape in his pocket. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, it's yeah, a little sketchy know. for a, a doctor. A new doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I did go to a doctor recently uh, and, and I, uh, I, he was like, do you smoke? And I was like, no, I vape. He's like, oh, that's cool. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I've been waiting for. <laughs> anyway, this doctor was like, you don't want to use the frozen eggs. You got to think of the frozen eggs as like your savings account right and the and the what we're trying to harvest these are that's like uh, building up your checking account and i was like thinking to myself like please do not use a bank account <laughs> metaphor in this most expensive it was like ten thousand dollars around like it wow. was so gnarly wow. and he's like think of it i was like oh an analogy in your your savings i guess your life savings <laughs> like, okay. yeah then, anyway we finally gave up and we decided to do the eggs and uh, the frozen eggs and we we thawed them out and it was eight eggs, and four of them survived. Do you do it at home? How do you? Work? Yeah, you put it in the microwave, and then you, <laughs> oh, oh then you, I see. And then you, you, <laughs> and you nut, come inside you it. You nut on, oh, right, the, right. on the the little holder. Right. So you know that they the ones that survive when you do it at home. You know the ones that survive and the ones that don't because the ones that don't survive they, they there's like a sort of a death scream. That, right. Ah! And you're like okay, they're like sea monkeys. Up. You put them in water, <laughs> right. in the sunlight, and we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. No, you don't do it at home. You uh, do it. They, I, they, no, they you don't. They, they do it. Yeah, yeah. So they fro- they they thawed them and only four survived out of eight. Now we're down to four. Oh my god. Then they tested them all for uh you know different stuff. Yeah. And only uh two survived. Now we're down to two. 
and then we implanted one and it failed and so now we're down to one and we're kind of at this point we're going like you know what fuck it adopt like, adopt or just go to europe you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. spend our lives having fun like you guys yeah. like having a good time <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know like it was almost sort of like there was something kind of relieving about it in a way it was like well, you know we'll just be like people without kids and have fun and just whatever and then we implanted the last one and that's our daughter right Aww. and uh yeah it's, it's like it feels miraculous in a way and they were telling her by the way they're like it's like 40 percent. it's like a set at the comedy store that's what they said <laughs> It's like a set at the Tommy era comedy yeah, stuff. Yeah, how yeah, likely yeah, this yeah. will work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and, and now we have this like super awesome kid that's like funny and talking and she's making jokes and she's great. Let me cause I, I the last time I talked to you guys about your kid was um when he she wasn't talking. Right. Now is that... we're not calling her he she. <laughs> right. What is this, it's a girl. It is, it's a girl. What's her name? Uh that we're not saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Sweets, let's call her Sweets. Sweets, yeah. So, Sweets was um, not talking, all that stuff, but then now Sweets is communicating? Totally. And like, in, what, in what way? And, like, funny. Like, the, like I guess it was doomed to be funny, but, like, she is she cracks jokes and stuff. Like it's wow. Kinda, it's kinda, not, I mean, they're not good yet, but it's like, oh, you... And she likes attention. She likes to, like, run up to the front of a group and kind of do a thing, and, like, she's clearly got a performer bug in her. Right, which, right. I'm not stoked. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I would have yeah. preferred like, oh wow, we, a scientist. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But I definitely feel like she's a bit of a performer. She's awesome. She's great. But um, but 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 is the fate? Because I've heard dudes say or women say, yeah, the beginning is rough, mm -hmm. right? But then once they start communicating, it becomes more um, not meaningful, but like it just becomes funner. Well, it's definitely a lot funner. And for the for the first like year, it's kind of like you just have a slug. Like it's just yeah. like a little flesh slug that you have to keep alive because then then you have like <laughs> murder charges if you don't. You know? so yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. come on, slug. Yeah. But and it's cute and stuff. Thank God they say like they yeah. say babies are cute so that we won't just be like fuck that. I'm, not, I'm going to Europe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, like, but then they start talking. But then you know, what? I was thinking about this the other day. You know how boring children are. Like how you like it's unbelievable how boring yeah. they are. Yeah. Like you can't believe the conversation. <laughs> You're like, you get me. Like you want to die when you talk to a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> There's this beautiful kind of like mathematics of uh, emotional connection to a ba your baby because like the only person that could ever care about a conversation with a baby that's going like I'm m me like purple me like purple daddy drink coffee daddy drink coffee <laughs> yeah. the two of you have yeah. you heard that be like fucking yeah daddy drink coffee Get, do you have anything else to say dumbass <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I am fascinated by it because I remember her when she was like. Oh. <laughs> So I yeah. see like, whoa, you say daddy drink coffee now? Wow. Like you, also, you used to just Amazing. like shit and puke. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like parents are, are like coded to think that it's interesting because to, to me, it, it's fucking fascinating because I've seen every little strand of development. Do you look for, because I, I hear dudes go, because Kalala and I, are, we've been we're, talking, we're, talking about we're it. We're at an impasse. We're at an impasse. Wait, let me guess who wants them and who doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I want them. Wait, actually, oh, you don't? I, yeah, I don't. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, you yeah. thought the other way? Yeah, kind of. Oh, no, Maybe no. I'm sexist. Maybe that was just a sexist assumption. No, I, I, I really want one. I, I, but I think it was more. I think it was more that you feel like the nurturing one, and you feel like the nurtured. It, but, yeah, I, I, I was, it was more just like a fear thing where yeah. I, if he wasn't going to, um, oh, get better. Oh sure. I, yeah. I was just afraid that you know. She also just thinks that my like genes that. are weak. No, my genes are weak. No, my genes are That's weak. That's what you're her. saying. You're, my genes are weak. No, no, it's I've gonna sleep in your floor, not get a job. Genes are <laughs> not yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the weakest genes. I have no. murderers in my family. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have addiction in my family. So does he. So, so, so do I. Yeah, yeah. Mental illness. A lot of what mental What do they say? Illness? They say in AA, uh, mental illness and drug addiction don't run in my family. It gallops. <laughs> right. Uh, that's yeah. Like, that's me. I got everywhere. I got but yeah, we have but the way. But the thing is, is that regardless of how I was born with whatever traits I had or genes, it was like I was conditioned by my fucked up parents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I just feel like if we just use, you know, what I mean, the tools, you know, because number one, I would never hit my kid regardless. Yeah. Right. Right. And my dad used to beat the shit out of me. Right. Right. So it's like there are just certain things that I believe that I can fix. That is fair. It's like there, on the one hand, the trauma of your past, you feel like, well, who am I to raise a kid? I have this fucked up trauma in my in yeah. my blood and in my cultural DNA. On the other hand, it's like, 
oh, I've got all this information of how not to raise a kid. Okay. And I, I feel like that. Like, my mom was the opposite. She was like, her her abuse was was too much lovingness. It was like, she was like, in, on top. I always I described it as like, I Smothered. felt. Yeah, I, she grew up, I grew up with her sitting on my chest. That's how it felt. Oh. Like she was just like always there, just like loving me. She used to do this thing when I was a smoker where she would be driving and she would reach over and she would pat my leg like a loving pat but it wasn't a loving pat it was a frisk and she'd be she'd be like pat pat and then she'd feel the cigarettes yeah. she's driving on the freeway yeah. wow and she'd start grabbing them to try to destroy them and the fucking car is like oh. careening and like how old are you like seven yeah was seven when <laughs> yeah. i started smoking yeah. <laughs> how old are you like 16 17 yeah like 16 wow i think just things like that like my brother had this crazy breakthrough in therapy which i really impacted me strongly it's like growing up my, we would tell my mother a need that we had like, you know, like we're hungry or you lied or whatever. And she would respond, I love you. And it was like, that's not the right answer. That's that's not even applicable to what we're talking about. Like, he does the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. When he's up against the corner or if something, he he replies with I love you as, like, I, I hate it. It's one of the Sorry, things Bobby. that Bobby, listen. drives me crazy. <laughs> what are you but doing? it is, it is so like, <laughs> but in a way it is so belittling where it, it's, it, it does make me f feel similar. It, Sorry, there's yeah. two options. I love you. <laughs> or shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I love you feels like the better option. I love option. you feels like the better option. I know. Yeah. Shut the fuck up is perfectly adequate. Yeah. yeah. And I prefer that. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I hate the I love you. It's a... But, but don't you feel like we learned... Like, just what Bobby's saying. Like, you yep. learn all this information from fucked up parents. Like, I would... Like, I just... There's so many things I would never do to my kid because I they, they were done to me and it's obvious in retrospect. Do you think yeah. that we could possibly overcorrect, though? Because I feel like that's what my mom did. My mom right. grew up very um, poor and there were times when she's a one of ten kids, didn't have a lot of um, food a lot of times. Her son, She told me, like, one time she was so hungry and they didn't have food, so her mom gave her salt. <laughs> and water to kind of bloat her stomach and feel Whoa, full. Geez. It was that gnarly. desperate. One time, like, her brother ate toothpaste and rice to just add flavor to the rice. Oh. Shit like that. So when she got to me... Um, minty she... rice, though? Minty rice? Minty rice. <laughs> <laughs> kind of good over here. <laughs> when she got to me... <laughs> She didn't allow me to feed myself. It was always spoon fed because wow. she wanted me to meet all my, you know, requirements. Quote. Exactly. Right. And so I was spoon fed up until I was almost 13. But you know about 13. over. I know, but you now, you now know about overcorrecting, right? Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to talk about one of our favorite sponsors. Blue Apron, the tastiest food that you'll ever eat. Blue, Blue apron. apron. It's 10 times better than Chef Boyardee. <laughs> oh, wow, that was really good. Thank you. It's called talent. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, no, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm doing the best I can. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Um, Blue Apron is something that when I get excited, when I come home, sometimes I'm in a bad mood and I get hungo, um, I see the Blue Apron box outside our door. Like this one, look. And I, yeah, and I get really super excited because... It's something that, that it, number one, you know it's going to be a great meal. Number two, it's easy to make. Even guys like me can mm -hmm. do it. And number three, it's just um, the quality of food is restaurant quality. It Look, really is. Like for this, this this week, we're having smoky chicken and creamy cilantro sauce. Ooh. No fancy stuff. What's behind that one? It's a Middle Eastern burger. Ooh. Yeah, so create a personalized plan that works for you with Blue Apron's ever-changing mix of plant-forward, vegetarian, carb-conscious, Mediterranean, diabetes-friendly, <laughs> WW-approved, and 500-calorie or less options. Guys, so create a healthy mealtime routine that works for you in 2020. Uh, check out this week's menu. You get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash belly. That's blueapron.com slash belly. Blue Apron. Feed your soul. Blue Apron. Okay. Enjoy the show. It's not. She's not aware of her behavior. What I'm saying is, is that because I'm in therapy, because mm -hmm. I go to meetings, because I talk to people about issues that I have, and I even go, is this like in my therapist today? It's like, what I, what I can I tell you what happened Friday night? Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no. Can we get back to my album, please? <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. We will. But um, I, I acted like such a fucking baby. So Friday night, I'm playing the improv in Irvine. And, you know, Third I, <laughs> Irvine Improv drop of the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hard time getting that joke. Right, 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 right. It was right. not worth it. Yeah, but I. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I um so in my head I'm like you know normally you know the last years I played Irvine it's always them calling me like where are you uh-huh are you here because you're about to go up and I'm like no I'm in uh I just left house you said it like that? Yeah, yeah I left house. <laughs> I left house. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, I'm. They're, they're trying all... to convince them you're foreign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I guess yeah. Bobby doesn't really know English. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm always late. I'm, you know, I, and then when I show up, people have to stretch and people get nervous and worried. Right. And since I'm sober again, I went through all the stuff I went through and I'm in therapy now. I, you know, decide Friday, I go, I'm going to leave during the day. Sure. To be mindful and respectful to them. Be respectful to me so I don't have to panic. And I'm going to have a nice dinner there, mm. and then I'm going to do my shows. So when I showed up, I they go, what are you doing here so early? And I, told, I explained to them, I'm being mindful. Me left house long ago. <laughs> <laughs> me left house. Me here early. So I um, Me mindful. Yeah, so I decided I'm going to just eat at a restaurant, and I'll see you guys at showtime. They're like, fine. I go to this restaurant next door called Paul Martini. Martini's. Mm -hmm. And I go, it's kind of busy. And I go, hey, I'm headlining next door. It's just a table for one. Can I just get a table because I have to perform? No, two hour wait. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> I continue. <laughs> yeah. I go, I'm the headliner at the improv. And I, can I get a table? No, we're too busy. So I go back to the club and I go, you have any pull? We have no pull there. Now I'm getting a little angry. At Paul Martini's? Uh-uh, we can't do anything at Martini's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then they go, we have a fucking connection at Javier's. Ooh. So I go, you know what? I'll go to Javier's. They go, we'll call in advance. I show up to Javier's, and the two Hispanic... Good thing you mentioned their race. I was wondering. I have to, I have to, I have to know who they are. I have to tell people who they are. I go, um, hey man, I'm headlining next door. You know, I'm in a rush. Can I just get a table of one? Two, two hour wait. I go, no, I'm, they called. I know they called. No. <sighs> but I'm, you know what I mean? Nothing. So I go back to the club and I don't know what switched in my mind. Oh no. But now I'm, uh, I'm not doing the shows. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to do the show? So he leaves and he's driving around in circles. He calls me. <laughs> what do the shows have to do with it? Because it's, I'll tell you why. <laughs> In my thinking at the time, mm -hmm. and it, okay, anyone listening to me, I know it sounds crazy, it gets crazy at the time. This is at the time, <laughs> but in the moment, right? My thinking is, right, I sold 2,500 seats. I know that 30% of the audience eats at these restaurants, sure. So, I, I bring in traffic for these restaurants, all the comics do. I'm sorry, but we do, right? Right, and also, I was just at the Cleveland Hilarities, I showed up. When the restaurant was closed, and because Nick and the restaurant is so respectful, they opened everything up, and they served me prime rib. But just respect. Well, that club is like built on respect, like that. That place, you always feel like you're you grew up in the Bronx, and the mob boss loves you. Right, you know, like, Nick, come you... here. He grabs your elbow. You come here. Anything you want. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, you need clams? Oh, I got a really good <laughs> yeah, clam. Yeah. <laughs> what a great man, right? Yeah, totally. Right? Yes. So you 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 go to places, you get treated that like, and then like you know, even brother, like we, just, it's out of our hands. Right. Right, and then I'm just, and they, you can eat our shitty food. Sure. Oh, I'll get diarrhea before the show. That's great, right? But I, um, I acted like a baby, and I go, you know what? I'm not doing it. Mm, and then he calls me. I call uh -huh. him, and he's just in an absolute rage. I'm not doing the shows. I'm not doing the shows. Who do I call? I'm like, well, I don't know. And I'm. This is how I know I'm codependent because instead of saying you're being a fucking baby, get back in there and do the shows. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's fucked up. I have yours <laughs> at Paul Martini's. How fucking dare they? She, feed it, she fed I into it. I fed into she it. She fed into it, right? She, that's what I love about her. That's funny. That's what's great. I'm seeing you guys as parents. Bobby's like, I walked away from the playground. I left Junior there alone. <laughs> What did he do? That's fucked up. Yeah. He deserves it. I just co-signed, and I was like, wait, this is a problem. It's a problem. So then what'd you do? But then the next night, I showed up again super late to make them worried. Okay. To make the Irvine Improv worried? Yeah, that I might wasn't going to show up. But what did it have to do with them? So that next time I play, they the call Irvine Improv, Javier they, and they, Paul. They, they make, you know what I mean, their proper decision-making. 
I know. I know. Hey, fucking Chong. Chong, Chong. I fucking know that that behavior is crazy. Uh, and I'm funny. acting like a baby. And it comes from my childhood. I think, I think you were just hangry. No. No? no it's not hangry, babe. <laughs> trying to co-sign some more? It's not ha- you're you're uh, co-signing. Too hard. <laughs> I used to, um, when I would drive from the Oakland to San Francisco, which I did four or five times a week when I started comedy, because uh, a lot of the open mics were there. Yeah. Every time I would get to the toll booth operator, I would say, how you doing? And I would say ni- 90% of the time, they would completely ignore me and take the money. i go, good, nice talking to you. And i drive <laughs> off every time. And then at a certain point, I was like, I, I pulled up and I was like, why am I saying how are you doing to these people? Am I saying it to be kind to them in what is probably a thankless job where you want to put a bullet in your brain? Yeah. Or am I doing it to elicit proper behavior am i am i here to teach these people a lesson in, right. in oh. cordial behavior or am i just mm-hmm. trying to be a nice guy because i'm pretending i pull up nice guy and then they do, they don't they give me the result i've had every time and then i'm like well uh, nice talking to you too <laughs> i'll see you another time then <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, yeah have a nice day and i drive off so then i just started saying how you doing and then they don't answer and i take my money and i drive it's like my job t- is not to teach the world the lessons. Mm-hmm. I know, dude. So, th- but the thing is, is that <laughs> my behavior is rooted in when you know my parents did s- fucked up things to me, and right. I felt s- such injustice and disrespected. Right. Right. Because right? your dad, he would beat you up, and then he would go to Paul Martini's every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't afford it, but uh, <laughs> no, you could. but uh, no. So I, you know, I whenever there's some, I feel there's some sort of you know, disrespect. I know I'm with and you. injustice Ugh. that I act inappropriately, um, and it's that, so. That's what I'm saying is is that I'm analyzing my behaviors. Like is that time in the, I talked to my therapist today about the time in the movie theater with, when we watched Hereditary. Oh, yeah, but see, that was no, no, no. What we did was wrong. What what happened? I'm a quick breakdown. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a quick synopsis. We did. You're it watching wrong. Hereditary, and during when one of the girl's scary- head comes off, you're jerking off. <laughs> Somebody said something. I get it. We've all done that. Um, so there was a couple in front of us. Um, during the end of the movie, there was a particularly scary scene, and we scream. Yeah. Bobby's coping mechanism when he screams, after he screams, he does his giggle at the end. Oh, sure. So he screams, and then he it. giggles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the couple in front of us didn't like that we were being Boy, expressive uh-huh. and or screaming at all, actually. And um, they turned around and they were like, "Shut the fuck up!" Whoa! And basically, Shut the fuck up. yeah, and That's basically it. told us if you know that you make sounds at a movie theater or like are you know scream, you probably shouldn't be watching this in public, is what they told us. Whoa! Like during the scary part where it was a jump scare. You left their race out. Now I'm curious, but. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy to say in Hereditary, of all things. It's like, scary a fucking scary movie. movie. Right. Yeah, the but, movie but I've ever instead seen. of just letting it <laughs> That's insane. So instead of just letting it, it go. It would have been cool if he had turned around and been like, shut the fuck. Are you a stand-up comedian? I recognize you. See, that. He knows that he's a stand-up. Yeah. Right. Well, anyway, that was, a, <laughs> that was an attempt at a joke, but uh, are there editors on this podcast? Yeah. Sorry. We're keeping it we in. Were, we were. <laughs> we were. Instead of just letting it buy his album, (laughs) and obviously these people were like unreasonable. Sure, but we played their game. So when the lights came Mm -hmm. back up, we waited for the credits to go down. They waited. Yeah, (laughs) everyone left the theater. You waited till the end of the credits. Yeah, yeah, and the the lights came came on on. because we wanted to see them in the face. We wanted to be like, "Who the fuck are you?" We wanted to have a confrontation, basically. Yeah, because typically we're really spineless. Sure. We're the most spineless couple ever. When things are done to us, we're like, well, okay, well, that didn't work out. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> we're a tail talk. You become you know? Jewish. Okay, well, yeah. welcome <laughs> to Green Blatt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what, well, yeah, what happened? Then it became... Um, a, a screaming, yeah. one-way screaming. I took my blood. earrings off. I slapped Vaseline in my lips. I was ready to fight. Wait, literally? Yeah. You put the Vaseline fort- on? Well, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, that would yeah. have been a real fight. That's, that's some. A, that's some another real Filipino joke, shit. Moshe. God real damn it. Filipino shit. That's it's a like, real joke. This one's for Manny. This one's for Pacquiao, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, there's four stories to this oh. mall where this theater is. Down the escalator, we're right behind them, screaming. Well, they were screaming right back, though. Yeah, screaming at each other. Oh, I relate to this so much. And uh, it's a fucking movie theater. It's a scary movie. I can't fucking scream, you piece of shit. And then you know what they did afterwards? They were like, "We need to call security," as if so. They were we white. Initiated. Okay, I figured it out. Got it. Got it. Got it. And then she started. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fuck you, all right? <laughs> right? When they said security, I was like, oh, white people. Okay, okay. Got it. And then the, the woman started um, scream crying, but she started to get emotional and oh, crying. Oh, wow. And then I doubled down because then I got a little bit of whiff. A yeah, like, little you bit of blood. blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like Blair High School all over you again. You loved it. Yeah, and I, I hadn't popped off like that as an adult ever and but it was but that was fucked up we, we, we should have just left. let it pass we should have moved seats they were crazy I yeah know. i do that too I, I literally i was talking about this just with my family on the way here to before i just before i came here about the space between uh incident and reaction mm-hmm. the like that one second space where like i was I, I was talking about this fight i got into a burning man recent this last year where it's just like some guy was telling me to move the my bike and i was like okay no problem and he's like because they're out in the fucking road and then i was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah. it's just like that's all it took it's like what do i care and now i'm thinking back on it it actually ended very funny because then i was just like they're not we started getting in each other's faces we started screaming it's a burning man it's like a hippie festival and i'm like you know step out my face motherfucker you know like, <laughs> and then and then it's just getting more and more tense and then finally somebody grabs the guy and pulls him away and grabs me and pulls me away it just really did happen like, wow. somebody came up to me and goes Hey, are you Moshe Kasher? Do you do a podcast with Natasha? Oh, <laughs> it was like the, wow. worst, the worst timing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's have... the best because it shows the guy. No, he was long gone, long gone. Oh, it was damn it! The timing. Like, was and bad. I just go, I just, I, gra- <laughs> I grab the guy's, I grab the guy's sleeve. I go, please don't tell anybody about this. Uh, oh wow, wow. Is there a part of you though that where it's like it's obviously not our job to um, teach people how to have manners or how to react, but there's a part of me where I'm like. Am I gonna let this guy live his whole life unchecked? Does he do this to other people? Well, I've thought about this a lot, which is that sometimes, okay, as you live in the world, and there's a certain philosophy that, that, where people like like to fight because they go, if you live in the world and you're a primate and you get in the space of another primate, mm-hmm. you're gonna get the consequences of a primate. Yeah. I'm, my primate brain's gonna come up and I'm gonna attack you, or you're gonna attack me. It, like part of living in the world with Homo sapiens is that we sometimes use violence to prove our point, or Verbal our violence. Friends, our brains have developed over time. <laughs> right. right. But there is a logic to it, right? Which is that, sure. is that uh, people shouldn't be allowed to act like this, right? Yeah. People shouldn't be allowed to live like this unchecked. But then I know for myself, and I have so many stories of stuff like this. I'll, I'll tell you a couple uh, if you have the time yeah. for it. But I know for myself, I am never the person that should be teaching those lessons. Right. Because it's spiritually and psychologically destructive to me yeah it never i never walk away going like cock of the walk baby yeah. Yeah. now yeah. they know what's up that, <laughs> yeah. that dumpy lady scream cried at the amc 15 yeah. and she's gonna change it's like i always feel emotionally hung over and you're fucked right. up always you're right and i feel the same way i feel sick afterwards it's like a, a sick adrenaline dump and i feel like i it's lost a, it's that a shame it. hangover yeah it is yeah. and then you get yeah. have you been in a fight in the in your adult life in Not my physical, no. physical mm-hmm. fight because the thing is like I have and I won yeah. and I felt I know you won I know I know I know believe me <laughs> well, I have a whole bit about it on my first was it Brad Williams who was it, <laughs> <laughs> it was Natasha it was, was Natasha, Natasha? Oh. yeah it was another dwarf no it's uh, I, I won and that's the punchline of the whole joke is like I the shame dump is literally what you're talking about. Yeah. The moment the fight was over, it's a whole long bit on my special, but I go, the moment the fight was over, I was just like immediate flood of shame. Like, like the, I was saying the closest you could compare it to is like when you're with someone sexually that you shouldn't be with the moment after you have an orgasm, you're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Oh, you just want to like push the person off of your bed. You know what I mean? And make yeah. them kind of disappear. Into their car. And I immediately, on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately ran up to the guy. I, I just won. He literally, yeah. literally the guy tapped out. I like choked this guy out. And uh, this was like you jiu jitsu. No, I was. I, but I do watch a lot of UFC, which is very very similar. Uh, but it <laughs> like the, the Connor fight Saturday. What, yeah, it was amazing. Amazing. Really. We'll talk incredible. about it in a second. So literally, this is a hundred percent true. I like I, I fight the guy. I'm choking him. He taps out. I immediately feel ashamed of myself, mm. and I run up to the guy and I, I shake his hand. I go, I'm <laughs> "Sorry, I'm so sorry." What a great nerd. martial artist. You are. <laughs> so what a good sport. Oh, shit, I'm like, I'm so so sorry. Like, I don't yeah. know what I was thinking, and like, it's just like that. That shame dump is like so. It's basically the point of the bit is you can't win a fight as an adult, Mm-mm. and and the, oh, the punchline is is that I I'm feeling ashamed of myself. I'm feeling mm. terrible, and then I'm like, but think about that fucking guy. I just won the fight. Think about how not, how that guy's night is going. Look, you wouldn't imagine you're getting choked out. You look up and it's fucking me looking back at you. That's that's a rough night in the tenderloin. 
Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> I know, I know. But at the end of the day, I know punchline. People I know. come. Yeah, people yeah, come. Yeah. People. I don't know what those people in the movie theater, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their lives are like. I don't know what happened during the day for them to do that. Maybe they had a bad day or whatever, right? But they got a pretty good picture of what his life was like. I, I know, but babe, 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 but the, he's wearing a Patagonia jacket. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. In in what's that place in um, next to Seattle? That super tech place, Rich. Uh, be, um, Bellevue. Bellevue, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a pretty good picture of what oh, he did. I know, but it's, this, it, it, we, we should have right. just let it pass. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but we have this brand new sponsor we want to talk about. Ray. <laughs> Ray, what you looking at, Raycon? <laughs> yeah. Con, That's what, I'm what you looking at, Raycon? What you looking at? Raycon, Raycon, Raycon. What you looking at? And your ears are Raycon, Bobby. You guys, Raycon, I'm telling you right now, I was at the airport and I had lost my, I'm not going to say something pods yeah. for your ear. Your, your wind pods. My wind, wind pods. pods wind you pods. know, the ones that Apple make. Yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're called something pods. The fruit company. And I go, I went to the guy and I go, how much are they? They were like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. For stupid little, you know what I mean. And then when when we I you got a Raycon, yeah, for my ear. Number one, it comes in a variety of colors. Thank God, they're so f- cool and fancy. They're better than the what, whatever. Pod. You know what? And they <laughs> because those wind pods really hurt my ears. I have really sensitive ears. Uh-huh. Yeah, Raycons do not. They do not. Mm-hmm. Tell them more, guys. Just like Bobby Lee, there's other celebrities that endorse this. Snoop Dogg, Cardi B. Melissa Etheridge, Brandy, right. J.R. Smith. Guy, okay, now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash belly. That's buyraycon.com slash belly for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash Honestly, belly. look them up online. You're going to really love the way Especially they Especially their latest model, the E25. Oh, the E25 is better than the E24 even. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> With six the hours E22 of E22 was good, but the six E25, hours. oh my God. Six hours, babe. Yeah, e E1 was good. Seamless Bluetooth. Seamly. Pain, pain. Pain, pain reducer. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. No, I was just listening to a podcast, actually, about this community organizing uh, group in Chicago that's basically trying to intercede with exactly what we're talking about. What, what, What is the difference in reaction? Like, if you can have one second to think, because in Chicago, you know, they have a huge murder problem, and it's all these kids that are that are uh, basically shooting each other over the moment it's done. Yeah. They're like, I just murdered a person over a fucking Mountain Dew and a and a and a you know a thermos, and like, I just want that one second of my life back. And they're trying to do like community intervention to help people with that, like that second between reaction and action. Yeah. It's like. Uh, that is my that is my worst spot. When I'm disrespected in any way, I'm like I go fucking apoplectic, dude. Me too. I was driving with Natasha. Uh, we flew back from somewhere and we we were at LAX and this Uber pulled up and uh, our Uber pulled up and I could tell when we were getting in the car this guy hates us. Like I could just feel it. I knew it. He was like a older white dude. Like he looked like a like a he was like old, like 55, 60, he looked like a jazz professor. Like he had like elbow Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> but very skinny and tall. Oh, oh okay. Right. Just like like Kirk David Fo- Taylor. Kirk Fox is an old man. Right. You know? okay, okay. And um but dorky. And he like he hated us I could feel it and to be fair uh, we were both wearing two hats because we brought too many hats so I could see why he hated us <laughs> but I was just like oh this guy like thinks we're like hipster scum or something yeah, like, yeah, you just yeah. feel it and yeah. the energy was off you are but yeah, no that, yeah, but not everybody <laughs> hates that yeah, 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 you can just yeah. feel this dude and we were we had just watched the movie um, Midnight Cowboy on love the, that movie on, on the on the uh, flight over yeah that's the that's the John Voight and, yes, and Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman and we're like talking about the, the film on the way back and like you know, it was like, oh, were they, were they in a gay relationship or what was it? Was it a psychological? I'm walking here. Yeah, you're yeah, walking yeah, over yeah, here, yeah. and you could feel the Uber driver just like oh, fucking, oh, <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't. He couldn't stand us, and we got to our house. I should have, by the way, immediately when I noticed his energy, been like, let's get a different car, but I didn't. So we're getting close to the house, and I'm like, uh, oh, this is a turn only lane. You want to get into your into your left lane, and he's like. <laughs> And he gets in the left lane, and then I'm like, okay, turn left here at my house. And he's like, 
then he, he loses it. For, this is literally the only interaction we had with him. He's like, I fucking know what I'm doing, okay? And I go, okay, pull the fucking car over right now. Like, I, I, I'm i like snapping, right? Wow. And, and he's just like, oh, fuck you. And he pulls over and, and I'm like, uh, I'm like screaming. He's screaming at me. He's like, you fucking jackass. And I start recording, which is always a way to calm things wow. down. If, record, yeah. if you're ever in a conflict, if you start recording, everything calms him down immediately. <laughs> down. Every, everybody's happy. Recording. Record, record, always record. record. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, he goes, I, I'm, I'm like, pop the trunk, bitch. I'm getting my, my luggage. And he's like, I'm not giving you your luggage. I'm calling the police. And I'm like, for fucking what, you motherfucker? Like what? Uh, and I'm like, and Natasha's pregnant. She's like nine months pregnant. It's like, I think we were flying back from our special actually, which was her last, uh, her last flight before she could, uh, before she couldn't fly anymore. Yeah. So she's like demonstratively pregnant and I'm fucking losing my mind. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, give me my fucking luggage. I'm like, you know, just give me my luggage. Give me my luggage. And he's like, no, I'm calling the police. And I go, Natasha, uh, 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 j- jump in the car and pop it. She's pregnant. And Natasha's oh like, God. please stop. And I'm like, get away from me. That's how I know. And these are two signs that I am, am out of control is if I'm screaming at Natasha when she tries to stop it or if I mention that I grew up in Oakland if I ever mention I grew up in Oakland <laughs> very bad situation we're not, we're not in a good place but and I'm like I'm like pop I'm telling a pregnant woman like hop in do a fucking stunt yeah. like jump into a car <laughs> pop and so finally he goes off he's calling the police I don't know why and I run and I jump in and I pop the trunk and he runs back over slams the car down oh, and I'm like I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do here like I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna like beat this old man's ass like I'm gonna I, I just don't know what to do and somehow Natasha calms the situation down enough that he gets the he gets the um the somehow he takes our luggage out and I grab it and I'm like uh I'm like, all right, I got my luggage. Now get the fuck off my property, bitch. Also, you know, I uh, if you mention pr- your property, yeah, yeah. You're, you're bad, bad yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. That's a white person. Right, 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 right. my property. I own this. <laughs> I own this. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm calling the police. I'm gonna wait till the police get here. And I go, and they fucking tell them what, man. And he goes, I'm gonna tell them that you guys are fucking idiots. And I go, yeah, I'm sure they'll arrest us for being idiots. And he goes, yeah. And I'm gonna tell them, and I'm gonna tell them that you didn't understand the plot to Midnight Cowboy. <laughs> I was like. Like, okay, you win. I think you win. <laughs> like as a I like comedian, I did think like really, you, like you did he really say that? I swear to God. And That's I'm, what he was mad about? I guess so. And I just go like, you know what? As a comedian, what is the plot? I gotta respect <laughs> I gotta respect this guy. I don't understand the movie. <laughs> what was his rating when you first um, what was his rating um, on Uber oh that's a good question I don't know but, uh, you gotta but, check that mm. I, I didn't even look but I will tell you your boy did not pay for that ride definitely hey. did contact Uber that was my first my go to my was <laughs> Jewish was the first go to like, I had a very unpleasant experience <laughs> <laughs> you didn't call corporate? No, I, I complained to corporate. But then it's like Ubers are crazy, right? Because they dropped you off at their house. I mean, if a man is willing yeah. to get into a near physical altercation with me over the plot of Midnight Cowboy, yeah. like, is he not willing to come back and shoot my place up? Yeah, you got to be careful, dude. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy it's, shit. It's scary. So all yeah. I should have done, all I should have done, a real grown what could, up. What could you have done different in that situation? Take a left in, here. In retrospect. I know what I'm fucking doing. Okay, man. There we go. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do as an adult in the world. It's not, it's not, I'm not trying to be like the alpha male of the world. Obviously, look at me. I've made some choices that have taken that out of my options. You know? <laughs> no. It's like, oh, it's like okay, man, uh, move your fucking bikes. All right, dude. And then if you get aggressive, be like, I'm sorry. I mean, why not? What does it matter? Yeah. What, what am I trying to accomplish? That's what it is. That's what I was talking to my therapist about. Is, is that it's, you know, in retro, if you look at the incident, mm-hmm. right, let it pass. Well, Let some time pass. Your emotions are too close to the event. Well, you think about what the stakes are of what they're doing. What are the stakes? Yeah. When someone tells you shut up in a movie, what are the real stakes of that of that offense? Zero. Mm-hmm. Less than zero. It's like, yeah. wow, somebody once told me to shut up at a movie theater. Oh, okay. They're, they seem rude. But in the moment, it feels like I'm willing to die or go to prison for the rest of my life because yeah. of this. And the, the stakes are, are, are zero. They're zero. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I want. I want to be a guy. My stepfather is Larry. You guys know Larry. And uh, <laughs> he's like the meekest. He's a scientist. He's an entomologist. And my life, my whole life, I've been living by. Uh, he was an entomologist? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. He was a bug doctor. Yeah. I well, for the longest time I wanted to be a forensic entomologist. What you study how uh, bugs died? No, to basically date dead bodies based on the bugs that are oh. living in the in the wow. corpses. Well, his is much less sexy. He does yeah. like database management for aphids and uh, you know what, Larry oh, I like side. aphids. <laughs> oh, sexy That's for you. I envision uh, your stepfather looks like remember in Science of the Lambs. 
when she brings the bug to those nerds uh-huh. and they yeah. ask her about yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. what is that what, what does he say what does a um, detective do on his off time he pees in a beer or something like that yeah but that's the opposite of my he's the meek he wouldn't have flirted with Jodie Foster he would have just like looked at his computer uh-huh. and my, all the, my whole life I'm, I, I'm Jewish so I can't do WWJD I can't do what would Jesus do yeah. but I always ask myself what would Larry do all my life. <laughs> oh, what like, would Larry, like he's yeah. like my spiritual north star. I'm like, what would Larry do in this situation if an Uber driver was rude to him? He would yeah. go like, oh, okay, please let me out. What would Larry yeah. do if somebody told him shut the fuck up in a movie theater? He would just go, hmm. And like, listen, I don't want to be like a a beta bitch, like my stupid bitch ass stepdad. No, I'm kidding. But like, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> like he's got spiritual wisdom because he doesn't care. He's not. Yeah. It's not that he's just a a bitch. It's that he doesn't care. He's like, why would none of that has to do with me? I got yeah. bugs to kill. Oh, I like oh, Larry. I love yeah. Larry. Uh, Larry's yes, a good guy. I should live. What would I? I I'm going to do the same from here on out. The, another thing I was thinking, I was telling my aunt about. We were literally talking about this on the way here. It's so weird. Is that I I do boxing training. Uh. Right? Uh, Why do you laugh? You seem like you. Oh, are you okay? You seem like you had an indigestion right when I said boxing no, training. It's like um, Kathy Bates saying that she's a. Fast swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, same now. <analogy. laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I do. I take boxing from Paula Poundstone. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, and and my trainer is like it's like fitness boxing you know it's not we're not like I'm not like t- training <laughs> oh, to be a, oh, okay, okay. I'm not like training to be a killer <laughs> say it's something else is it like a yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no it's no it's it's pretty good it's like martial arts training but you it's hit, on yeah. bags we don't okay. spar or anything yeah, yeah. anyway the point is the guy who teaches <laughs> the, the class we used to be a prize fighter he was like in the ring and he's fought like hundreds of, of fights and I asked him about the situation at Burning Man actually because the guy what happened was the moment I said actually my bikes aren't in the in the road so chill out or something like that the guy got in my face yeah and that's when i really lost it i was just like you're in my face you know i have all this like programming telling me that when a man is in my face it's time to more aggression and i go what do you do in a situation like that and he was like i all the main thing you need to do is move to the right and get out of his uh, uh, his punching range mm-hmm. and ah. i was like there's like a spiritual analogy to that like i just always need to like like because the problem is i'm not martial arts man enough to think i must move to the right and get out of this guy's punching range you know i'm like in his face which is where you get knocked out it's, yeah but yeah. also spiritually it's where you get knocked out when you step in further you're in more danger not less danger you're trying to like you're trying to out shout the chimp but if you move to the left or the right whichever is the thing where you won't get punched you're out of the you're out of range of wow. the rage and then you can make choices then if the person is really dangerous okay you can hit them back or okay you can say something back but i want to be in control of moving to to the right of, of people when they bring me aggression. Wow. Those yeah. are the last words of my uh, album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cross her face. But you know, like, when I when I did this, uh, when I went to this therapy group a couple of years ago, there were a couple people in the group that were rageaholics, mm-hmm. and they were court-ordered to, to be there because they didn't have a, a handle on their rage, and one lady had, like, jumped out of the car in the middle of the freeway and, like, pulled another lady out of her car and beat the shit out of her, some shit like that, mm. that rageful. But even the knowledge of, like, you know how you're talking about that one second, like, reactionary time? They were able to break it down to make it f- make it look like, visually for us, how long and how many, mm. like, chemi- how many processes, bodily processes, we actually go through before, in that one second, before we make that bad decision. Right. And I think for her, that was really helpful is to see that it's not just a second. It's actually a long time. Right. Before you you can make a choice in that time, and you're also making mini calculations because, yeah. like, I'm sure you've all been in the situation where you try to buck up on someone, and then you assess who you've just bucked <laughs> yeah. up on, and then yeah. you're immediately able. I did that once on the bridge, same bridge. I pulled up, somebody cut me off. I pulled up, I was like, "Hey!" and I looked in, and it was like four thug ass motherfuckers. Oh wow. Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like one moment before I was like the gangster of of, uh, of the Bay Bridge, and now all of a sudden I'm like a diplomat. Like you know what I mean? It's like yeah. so if you can make the calculation, that's what I really realized. It's like I've I've gotten into situations before with people that I've deemed physically weaker than me. I know it's hard to believe there are any, but I've I've, I've made the calculation, and that feels worse than anything I, I have one friend in particular who one time he said something to me and i just like started threatening him and i like i'll beat your ass all this like sort of the fucking stupid oakland programming you know and yeah it's always i'll knock you out it's like so stupid as shit and then i go i wouldn't have done that if that guy was bigger which means he i'm a coward it means i'm i'm a pathetic coward yeah. i assessed him i was like you're not a threat to me physically right and now i can really like I'll, yeah. So if you can make that calculation, yeah. how come you can't make the secondary calculation of like I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna do it? Like 
Think about how many people are in jail right now because of a moment that they that is the most meaningless and meaningful moment of their lives. That's like my yeah. entire Filipino family. Somehow, someone always finds an ice pick. <laughs> someone always gets stabbed. It's our weapon of choice, yeah. ice picks. Everyone, at least four males in my family during an altercation has found an ice pick as if they're just available everywhere. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, okay, to bring it back to the child thing. Yeah. I'll tell you what you can take, I don't know why I'm giving you counseling, but I'll tell you what you can take some solace from in terms of your uh, your worry about your family and their ice picks. Yeah. You know, their collection of ice picks. In my experience so far, child raising a child is not reactionary. It's not momentary. It's the like I said, you see the baby when it's a slug and then it goes gurgle, gurgle, and then it goes dada, and then it goes dada's uh, tired, and then it goes dada, uh, will you read me a story? And then, it, you know, mm-hmm. it's like everything is, it's slow and it unfolds. And so you don't, you're, it's not a momentary reaction. It's a, it's a process, a slow process. So you can, you can even watch the trauma come and say, I'm not going to bring that here. I'm not going to wow. do that here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going how to- do you explain like shaken, ba- shaken baby syndrome then and how like mostly it's like the dads that give them like <laughs> subdural, hem- uh, you know, hemorrhaging? How do I explain that? Yeah, like you know how they always what? say like men. No, no, no. I have an explanation for Who this. Who shakes their baby? That's a common thing. Hey, when I there's was billboards doing my that say don't shake your baby. Yeah, but I don't know why you would go. Uh, because wh- we think it's not a big shake, but it actually takes a very little shake. No, I, I I'm gonna do this, do this, and then that's it. Three positions. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that. No, I I think you're not gonna do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bruce Lee palm strike. Yeah. You, you, you do the uh, the, yeah. the uh, chokehold I did in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I'll do like a kumura. I mean, I can't speak. <laughs> I can't speak to people that are literally mentally incapable of raising children. Like, I don't think that's you. That's very obviously not you. Yeah, we're not like, gonna do that are, shit. The people that shake their baby to death. Are, shake no fucking baby. I, I, I'm so afraid of myself. I think. No, people, I saw you with the uh, Jessica's baby. You're like a t- like it's like the do God have, Jesus pussy. It's like you, fucking tender. Do you, oh. do you have God Jesus pussy? God Jesus <laughs> pussy. They're my favorite no, alternative <laughs> band in the nineties. Wait, do you have pets? I have six. You have six, and do you often shake them to death? No. Never once. I'm, I've never hit not. A we are so. One have they ever made you angry? All yeah, time. dude, my right. fucking so, dog just bit the fuck out of me yesterday. So you have the capability of not killing a defenseless animal. Possibly, yes. Well, my po- I postulate <laughs> that you will like your baby even more than your okay. sick, your t- than your too many pets. You know, I, I there's a there's <laughs> I think that you'll probably you know what I mean. The people that do that kind of shit, those are people that were forced into having children and they are psychologically incapable of it, and they yeah. just somehow found themselves in a situation where the, the, you know they they shouldn't ever have had access to a child. And they have one, and they're literally tasked with raising it, and that is what happens. Yeah. I, wow. I think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a psychological yeah. expert. Let's talk about Connor. Okay, wait. Can I finish the? the yeah, and then we'll talk about Connor. Is it okay? Yes. Is that okay? Do whatever you fucking want to. This is your wait, show. I just know it's not. It's yours. <laughs> I know, but we're here together. You're my friend. I um, uh, speaking of uh, of psychological ticks. Yeah. And coping mechanisms, we had the baby, and uh, we had a C-section. Or I, she did. I, I was just jerking off. But uh, <laughs> um, they the, the thing that happens with the C-section is it's kind of interesting because uh, I actually I actually think it's kind of cool for the dad if it's a C-section because the mom is so drugged out because she's just had right. surgery that they they just hand you the baby and oh. you're like oh my god I guess oh my god like it gives you this I- instant time of you are oh. you are caring for this child so there's something very cool about that from a father's perspective so I was holding this baby and by the way I didn't feel fireworks I didn't feel and I feel like that's a lie that people tell dads like the moment the mo- like w- women yeah. have a s- physiological connection mm-hmm. so it's like different but for dad I felt mostly confused and my first thought was like this might have been a mistake like yeah. I, I don't know, I think I'm capable of this because I didn't have the firework yeah. I was just confused confused and scared and like uh, now I'm in charge yeah and that's one of the first things you realize with parenting is you're like wait I'm in charge <laughs> Uh, I just care for it. Yeah, like yeah, imagine, yeah. imagine you're a 16 year old, like impoverished, mentally ill drug addict, and they go, "Here, you're in charge." Yeah. That's when you shake the baby. Anyway, so they give you the baby, and and I'm just like holding her, and I'm like, "Oh God, this is so intense. I don't even. What is what is this?" And finally, I'm I'm overwhelmed, and uh, the the nurse comes in after about two hours, and she's like, "I have to take the baby and wash her and stuff like that." And I, I, I you can go get something to eat or something. And I I swear to God, this is the truth. I walked across the street from Good Samaritan Hospital 
directly into a donut shop and I bought a buttermilk old fashioned. <laughs> this was just like I used to on Western. Wow. But I think somehow there's some yeah, kind of right. connection. Yeah. connection. You just ate it at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Connor. Yeah. Connor. What'd you think of that fight? I mean, that was, it was, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I thought that was, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, Connor's one of these fighters where you're like, he's so great because t- Floyd's like this, Colby Covington's like this because they're so dangerous, but then also you kind of want them to lose. Yeah. But then you also know that they're dangerous, so you're kind of like enjoying that. You're enjoying your own pain when yeah. they don't yeah. lose. You're yeah. like, oh God, they got me again or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they do lose and you're like, ah, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know, but that was like, that was it's, terrifying. No, it it's literally. First of all, I love I love Connor because for me, I would be so nervous, and in my head, I'd be like, "This is going to be 50 Yeah, right. But he walks into the ring. It's crazy. Almost as, almost as if it he has it in the bag. No matter. I mean, it's, fucking Cerrone is no fucking chump. Right. He's right. a beast. Right. Right. Like like, uh, 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 one of the best fighters of all time mm-hmm. has a lot of records too. Mm-hmm. Has a lot of records too. Yep. Kicks, head, kicks. Uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> See, now Bobby, Bobby, I love you, Bobby, I mean. Bobby, that moment. Yeah, I, he I, said I, I has a lot of records. You had the second to decide how to react to that. <laughs> you went the other direction. I, I know. <laughs> but when he slammed his shoulder into his mm. face, improv. Right, improv. It's it's funny you say that because the other thing I was thinking about was also a comedy analogy, which is you know in your you kind of use the opposite energy, like we were talking about earlier. You use like humility or like uh, sad, I'm not good enough energy. But as you know very well, there's a lot of comedians that use the opposite, which is this like this hubris and bravado mm-hmm. where they can't bomb, and it's it works. It's true. The more yeah. unbelievably confident, and when I saw Connor step to the middle of the ring and like do whatever weird move that was, <laughs> which is just yeah. something he made up, or he's just like, I own everything. Yeah. I was like, this is like a, a comedian who's like, I can't bomb. Yeah, and that's what happened. He was like, I'm not gonna lose. I won't lose. And and you, as you're watching, you kind of believe it. Right. I know. I right. Know. You believe yeah. it, and then he does what he does, and you go, you know, and I, you know what. I'm inspired by him. Yeah, really? Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, a lot of times, you know how they say if you walk into a room like this. Totally. Right? You lost the room. Mm-hmm. Like if you job interview, you lost it. Right. You have to open yourself up. Right? And he he brings his shoulders out and he, he, he goes, here I am to the world. Right? And Cerrone was a little just pacey and a little, you know. But that doesn't always work. A lot of sometimes com- uh, fighters come out and they're like pacing around. What's the and- matter? Who's parking the driveway? Did you park in the driveway? No, I didn't. I'll go upstairs and probably figure it out. Maybe my uh, my sister. Oh my George. god. Yeah. But wait for stop right there. What yeah. the fuck is going on here? No, it's because uh, how do you con- interrupt the it? the contractors are contractors banged on the door loudly. The construction, yeah. My, they don't park in the lot anymore. Okay, well, just they're nice people. No, no, no. This is you don't interrupt like that. Oh, I should keep some time. Yeah, yeah, give it time. Oh. Reason, yeah. <laughs> so Reason it so out. Hard, Reason it out. <laughs> it's the reactive mind. It's impossible. Do we have an unhelpful advice? We do. You know what this is at the end? No, tell me. Every show we have an email, and um, people with problems, and we give them either good advice oh. or bad advice. This is this is kind of I'm not. It's not similar, but it's like we do the we do advice on our podcast that you guys came yes. on. Yes, yeah. but you guys do the the people phone in with their secrets. Yeah, right? oh, I be... love that. I had I was very envious when I was like, why didn't I think of that? You guys were so good on it. You were so funny. If you listen to that podcast, guys, if you love these two, you're going to love them on our podcast. Can I say your you being on this was so insightful for me? It, it, and I talked about things I never talk about. Well, I and I I really because I I get in the rhythm of talking about the same bullshit. And it's like I learned a lot from you, and um, I truly, honestly, I don't understand why. I know you're busy and stuff, but we should be more better friends. I, I agree, and I didn't get the before we go into um, unhelpful advice. I didn't get to thank you for what a kind intro you had. I mean, there's nothing kinder than a comedian saying, "I don't talk shit about this person behind their back." <laughs> That's very, very rare. Yeah, yeah. But the feeling is is uh, is and always has been so mutual. I love you. You're I love best. you too, man. Yeah. Go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Musha Cashier. 
Apple. Oakland, bro. Okay. <laughs> Tenderloin, baby. Okay. Come on, baby. <laughs> hey, I'm a high school student living in Northeast Iowa. For the past few months, I have been met with a problem. I think my girlfriend's dad wants to kill me. We've been dating eight months, and I am madly in love, but her father does not let me be with her because he does not trust me. We have only kissed around five times and have not even hooked up. Recently, she says she wants to take a break from me, and her dad wants her to break up with me. If she doesn't, he will beat her. What should I do? Oh, P.S. I'm a God. huge kid, 210 pounds and mostly muscle, and can bench over 100 <laughs> pounds over my own weight. I am much larger than her father. How old is he? Uh, no age, but high school. I love what? the what? Oh. I love the beat par- the father. I, I love the part at the end. He's just like, just FYI, to paint a mental <laughs> picture. I could knock that <laughs> out in a hot second. My thing is, is this, is that, um, and we've talked about this before, but it's your first high school. I know. It's like nothing. It's not worth the beat down. It's not know. worth uh-uh. any of it. It's we'll like, save that trust for me, dude, really I'm matters. telling you right now, if I would have married the, the small selection of women that were at my high school, I probably would have had a miserable life. If I would have married John Lynn, I would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> I would have had a nice life in Taiwan. <laughs> that was the it's most brutal. Um, I didn't. I didn't. The other boys, Sergio with a BMX. No, he he eventually lost his mind. Um, but John, John Lynn, yeah, down, right my down life John Lynn. Been, I'm gonna Google. I I honestly, I still look at his Instagram and I I I, I imagine. I'm like, you know what? That would not have been such a bad life. What a reveal this was at the very end of the podcast. Uh, I don't know. I. Wait, could, do we want to process this or should Go I? Go ahead, no, keep going. Well, I was just thinking that the uh, okay, no one's impressed with how much you can bench. Uh, <laughs> like, if you say how much you can bench, if you did get sexual with this girl, it would be uneventful for her because <laughs> no one who mentions how much they can bench has ever been a good lover. But uh, but in in the email, he said he said something very pivotal, which is because my first bit of advice was going to be that you should just walk up to the dad and make the V the like the pussy eating. <laughs> I think that'd be like that part. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you always break up the tension with a joke or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. But then she said, "Now, if to be serious, she said she he said she recently d- asked for some space, which means like, so this girl, let's pretend you guys really are in love, and you have two different uh, competing poles, right? The love, and then this like weird abusive uh, f- father situation." And the, this woman, this girl, has made a choice which dynamic she's interested in playing. Mm-hmm. She's decided, I'm going to go with the fucked up, because it's very difficult to break family patterns, mm-hmm. I'm going to go towards the abusive dad situation here. Yeah. So your answer has already been given to you. She's decided to side with the abusive dad. Your relationship and is if over. that's even the truth. We don't know what the dad is really like. Right. We don't really right. know right. what he's like. We don't know... If the he's circumstances. Using it as like a, I can't go out with you. Today it does sound dad. fishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I can't date you anymore, or my dad will beat me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, they've, they've really only good cop. kissed yeah. like four times. Uh, five, Kalila. Five. Five time kiss. Yeah. Yeah, that still sounds charitable. Don't you remember? Yeah, right. Totally. Yeah. Oh. It's either I don't like you, I never liked you, or my dad beats me. Yeah. And she just chose the third excuse. I used to just fuck virgin boys. Is that true? All right. Yeah. You did. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't um, fuck virgin boys. No. No, I wouldn't fuck them. <laughs> I would, if I ever found out a girl was a virgin that I was interested in, I would end it because I was like, I don't want to live in your memory. Like, I don't, <laughs> don't yeah. want to always. I, I was the opposite, so I was really, um, I think that I wasn't given a lot of validation as a teen, and I wanted to be imprinted in their memory well, forever. You, you definitely are. So um, with my bowl cut, um, I took some chances and I said, okay, um, um, John Lynn's not going to fuck me. So <laughs> I'm going to fuck all the virgin boys. Okay. That's pretty and crazy. And blazed in their memory forever. Have you had sex with a virgin? Yeah. Wow, I never had. I don't think I ever had. It was terrible. Anyway. I saw the girl that I lost my virginity You know what she did the whole time? No, what? Owie, 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 owie. No. <laughs> 50 times in a row. And she- owie? Not ow? No, she would go like this. Owie, 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 owie,
<laughs> Thank God. That would have been weird if she was 25. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of 25 year old says Alex? Okay, okay. I think, okay, she, was, I think she was 22. Yikes. Hang on. Yeah. So you just saw the girl you lost your virginity Well, I, at Burning Man, she fucking walked up to me. I don't know why all these stories come back to Burning Man. This girl walks up to me. <laughs> yeah. She was super hot, actually. And she was like, hey, Moshe, how are you? I was like, good, good. Like, <laughs> that's how you said it? She's like, how's Brian? Like, my childhood best friend. Yeah. So, that's not his real name. I don't know why I just changed it. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was like, good like he's good and i'm like who is this wow and she walked away and i go i like almost i think i screamed it but she was just out of your side i go fuck that's the girl i lost my virginity to like <laughs> wow. so that's i didn't even remember her it was not tasha there natasha was not there mm. no she was i don't think why do you go there if natasha had why do you go to burning man if natasha had been there she would have fucking taken her earrings off put that vaseline on. <laughs> <laughs> is it fun yeah, it's the most fun. Because I know Harlan Williams goes. Does he really? Yeah, yeah. he loves it there. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I mean, I guess it makes he's a weird thinker. He's a weird thinker. Yeah, 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 so that makes sense. Yeah, it's the most fun. It's the most fun weekend I have pretty much all year. You go every year. I've been every year for the last twenty years. Oh, so you're when real. is it next? When is it next? It's uh, Labor Day. When's that? September. Mm-hmm. Oh, you already passed. Uh, well, it both it has it's, passed yeah, and also is it's coming, coming up. Yeah, it's, right uh, in it's the just like this podcast. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I am want to. I want to make a declaration. Okay. Who do you go with? I go with whoever now. You can know what I, I like to. Can do? I go next? Can you I go, can go in September? You. I'd love I mean, for you to go. I mean, you're gonna be what? How many? How long sober? It's not an easy place to be newly sober at. Oh, oh no! I'll have a year by then. Over a year by. Then. I would go with you because what I've been doing the last few years because I'm kind of bored there now. To be honest, yeah. like it's been twenty times in a row. Yeah. Is I bring somebody for their first time and I kind of draft on their experience because yeah, they're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And why don't you both come? Yeah, we'll go both yeah. though. Yeah. That I, would be fun. But I would, is it boring if you're not gonna get high? N- <gasps> I've been twenty times. I've never been high. Yeah, I know. But so why can't no. I go? I d- only reason I like I, crystals. And the shit. only reason I I hesitate I like hairy armpits. is because it's a li- it, it, there, it's a, there's a lot of drinking and a lot of drugs. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a right. lot. So how you many be people like, are there? Like twenty. Twenty. Yeah. How many? Twenty people? people? Yeah, how many people go there? You think you've heard of Burning Man and it's a party with twenty people at it? I don't know what it is. I've never been there. I've seen a couple of buses and. Pe- and Have you? It's, it's an entire how many playa. People, how many people do you think go to Coachella? Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like eighty thousand people. Really? Burning Man, yeah. Wow, I want to go. Is there food trucks? Is there food trucks? No, there's no food trucks. How do you eat? You got to bring food. It's its own little city. You barter Of uh, barter, trading. There's no barter, really. Really? People oh. say that. I don't know why people say that. It's just not. I've never been, so I No, 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 you're not alone. Yeah. People say that all the time. No, no no money, no nothing. You bring everything you need to survive. Mm. You're not coming, Bobby. But I would love it if you did. You, it's so fucking bullshit it's that big. you just said that because you don't think that I will go. I'm gonna fucking go, man. Okay, I will. I will go with you if you go. If you get your shit together, you don't think I'm gonna go? Because he said this to Harlan a year and a half ago. And of he course, said, oh, yeah. yeah. But I don't like that piece of shit. He's <laughs> <laughs> not a likable guy. I love Harlan. Um, it takes preparation, which you're not very good with. I'm just. I'll, if you guys go, I would love to go with you. I think that'd be super fun. But I just don't see it. I just just don't see it. Tell him he has to actually um, camp. Yeah, you have to rent an RV or yeah. buy a tent. You have to bring all your food. You have to find a way to refrigerate all your food. I'll go to North food. Face. I'll go buy the jackets. That's all you need is, <laughs> is one jacket. Yeah, yeah. And just pop in. No, can I get tenting equipment at North at Face? At REI, yeah. You can go to REI, buy a tent. Why don't you get an RV? You've got plenty of money. But what do you do? I own an RV. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck I'll you, too, you I'll, 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 <laughs> How many seats are in your RV? Uh... One three, bed. Three th- three seats. How many beds, though? Two beds, but you can't sleep in mine. All right, I'll get my own. Can, can we just hitch rent it? one. You can just rent can one. Can we hitch RV so you can drive? I'll just be in the one in the second Honestly, one. Honestly, you could buy a tra- rent a trailer and I could trail it up for you. I've got a big, beefy thing. I don't have like a, a dorky RV that an old dad is in. I got like a big old, cool, off-roading kind of weird. Ooh. It's called an overland, like off-grid, solar, oh, composting I, you know toilet. I, I, I want to, honestly, I want to go... One time in my life. You should. I think everybody should. Yeah, okay. Here's how you do it, okay? You have plenty of money. I'm it's looking around. I'm looking around your house, just for the listeners at home. There are diamonds <laughs> falling from the ceiling. There are stacks of cash. It's no, crazy. no. Um, you, you rent an RV for the weekend, buy some tickets, buy a bunch of food. It's like, listen, it's not how I, at the, at the life state you're in, that's how you should do it. 
And then where do you park when, when I you're first there? Went, when I first went, yeah. I was 16 years old. I took my mom's oh. car, a tent. I had a sterno stove, and I showered by putting one of those one and a half gallon uh, water jugs above my head, and I was like covered in dirt for the week. Wow! And, and like I was filthy and disgusting. But then over the years, I've like I've got an Airstream, and then I bought an RV, and things have changed. But for you guys, you guys are successful, young entertainment industry hot shots uh all right fuck it we're going i'm, I'm in I'll all take right it. But wait before we are you about to say goodbye yeah i just want to say one more thing <laughs> yeah about ki- you guys having a kid i don't know i don't i don't know i can't i can't tell but what I, one lesson i've learned is that the like you cannot control what happens to your kid you just have no control over it the the the, the only thing you can do is like love them into health and feed them into health and that's it like you just try your best and you guys are so loving the two of you that I don't have any doubt that you guys would be wonderful loving parents and that none of the demons of your past would come to haunt you i'm not saying it will be you're going to have a perfect kid because that's impossible i got mental illness in my family and stuff too sometimes dna takes over but in terms of the job of the parent it's like you guys are just so you're the most, you're loving we'll figure it out babe yeah let's make it happen i'm more and- willing to I've never really considered it deeply before, but since he's gotten sober and since he's starting to connect the dots about his own trauma and really trying to dive into why he is how he is, I've been more inclined to, you know, consider it. If you go to Burning Man this year and you have a kid, Natasha and I will sign a legal contract that if things fall apart for the two of you, (laughs) we will legally adopt your child. (laughs) It our own. No. You know what? Out of any two people that I would give my child any to, two comedians, would, let's yeah, say two comedians, it would be you or Al Madrigal. Al is oh, Al's, yeah, Al's, Al's got us beat. To be honest, Al's got us beat. And his wife's beat. Korean, so it would yeah, make sense yeah, culturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Give it to Al. Fuck it. Give it to Al. <laughs> <laughs> Want to give it to Al from Oakland, motherfucker? Or <laughs> right, give Moshe a round of applause. Yeah. You're great, man. I love you. Love you too. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys. You're thanks for you. listening to us and joining us tonight, today. This afternoon, this morning, whatever day or time you're listening to, uh, support the podcast and a uh, big shout out to our sponsors, Hims and Blue Apron and Raycon. Dive into 2020 hair first. Go to forhims.com/belly to get your first month free. Create a healthy mealtime routine that works for you in 2020. Check out this week's menu and get sixty dollars off when you visit blueapron.com/belly. Get 50% off your stylish, amazing sounding. 15, yes. Oh, get 15% off your stylish, amazing sounding earbuds at Blue. Or blue at buyraycon.com slash belly and guys make sure you check out the slep king live because tickets are going fast in february he'll be in schaumburg and san jose and then in march he'll be in denver and houston so guys right now go to bybelylive.com and grab your tickets before they're gone and to get your question on tiger bell you can email us at advice on health at gmail.com Go ahead, George. We're looking for interesting, unusual, non-typical problems, and we need your help as much as you want ours. That's unhelpful at gmail.com. And if you listen to last week's episode with Dice and our housekeeping, we discover that George's cat That's name That's next is... week's Dice uh, episode. Hey, uh, guys, a uh, quick Andrew Dice Clay coming up next week. week. The legend. Uh, but, <laughs> the uh, legend. And, and what else will we find out in that episode? You'll get to find out in the housekeeping what George's cat's name is. And by cat's name is if George was a cat in the movie Cats, you'd find out his name. Anyways, that's so random. I guess we're just foreshadowing now because all these episodes are in order, obviously. Uh, we love you so much. Follow everything George at George underscore Kimmel. Everything Bobby Lee at Bobby Lee Live. Everything Kalila at Calamity K. And everything um, Gilbert at Gilberts. Thank you so much, George. We love you. Follow us at Tiger Belly. Good night.